X coasters get a lot of hate. Vekoma SLC and Flying Dutchman's get a lot of hate. Boomerangs also get a lot of hate, but one type of coaster is maybe hated equally, if not more than all of these, and that is the Zamperla Volare. Zamperla have been making amusement rides since 1966. The Italian company is best known for family rides, thrill rides and coin operated rides found inside of malls. Rather than the large scale coasters of Intamin, Vekoma or B&M, the company builds family friendly rides that can be easily replicated. Zamperla began when their founder, Antonio Zamperla, realised he could build smaller versions of popular adult attractions for kids, such as bumper cars. In 1976, Antonio moved to Montreal and his son to New Jersey, where he would open a sales office and spare parts store where it was a valuable union for the US market in conjunction with the busy design and production facility in Vicenza. From there, the company began to grow. Their biggest milestone would be a contract with the Walt Disney Company to supply attractions for the Paris theme park. Seven out of the original 12 rides were created by Zamperla. The successful partnership has led to over 25 rides being sold to Disney around the world. The company takes in $76 million a year and produces hundreds of rides every single year in all corners of the globe. From the Octonauts coaster at Alton Towers, the Buffalo ride at American Adventure, Pony Express and Knott's Berry Farm to Speedy Gonzales Hot Rod Racers at Magic Mountain. If you are a fan of theme parks, there is a high chance you have been on one of their rides. Welcome to Luna Park in iconic Coney Island, where the fun is only one ride away. Let's do this! Zamperla were also the company who designed, developed, and operate Luna Park in Brooklyn, New York, where they used old rides from the closed Astro World, along with their own designs, to redevelop the park. In 2002, two years after Vekoma had opened the first large-scale flying coaster, Zamperla would open one themselves. Set to open at LH Gardens theme park in Denver, Colorado, then known as Six Flags LH Gardens. The prototype model suffered from numerous operational glitches. It was by far the cheapest option for a flying coaster. The ride was slightly odd and was simply called Flying Coaster. Very original. Riders climb up a step ladder built onto the bottom of the train cars and position their heads and hands at the top of the train. The trains don't stop so you have to do a brisk walk to hop in and climb up and leap into the 45 degree angled train face first. Depending on the height of the rider, they will stand on one of the metal steps of the ladder. The back of the train is then locked down behind them, enclosing riders in a cage-type restraint. Inside though, you are free to move and not locked down other than being clamped inside the cage. Four riders sit across the train as it is moved into the flying position as it leaves the station, with riders now resting inside with their legs out the bottom on the ladder steps. The coaster then uses a spiral lift hill where it is pushed up not by a chain but by a large rotating lift mechanism. Once at the top, they dive down and accelerate to 25 miles per hour and into an inline twist. The train then enters more dips and turns before a second inline twist and heading back into the station. For such a small ride, it is quite intense, and the weirdness of being thrown around the track not secured in anything other than the cage is, uh, interesting. The reason this ride is so hated is due to the fact you are basically thrown around and beaten and bruised, especially if you're in the outer seats. The first version of the ride closed in 2008 and stood standing but not operating in the park for two years before it was removed and reassembled up at Zamperla's Luna Park as Soarin Eagle. Clones of the ride continued and in 2004, Canada's Wonderland would get one for the south, this time with a theme, Tomb Raider The Ride, based on the Tomb Raider movies. 
While the ride's layout was the exact same, it would feature a themed entrance resembling an ancient tomb. The journey began as you entered a failed expedition. Next to the entrance sign with a tent was two of Lara's motorcycles. Beyond were Chinese stone soldiers made of fiberglass and a stone wall with images resembling deities found in ancient Buddhist and Indian artworks. Inside the ride area, a rumbling sound could be heard and torches would grow. The theming was all built by Great Lakes Scenic Studios. Sadly, when Cedar Fair took over the park, most of the theming, including the tent and tunnel, were removed, and a few plants took its place, and the propane torches were no longer used. The ride was renamed to Time Warp, and the only thing left today is the stone mural. You can now escape the bounds of Earth and join the heroes, those few who can fly. Hero, the new extreme ride at Flamingo Land Resort Yorkshire. Experience the sensation of zero gravity flight. Hero is proof that man can fly. New at Flamingo Land Resort Yorkshire. Hero, no cape required. The United Kingdom would even get a copy of the ride at Flamingo Land. Even after people hated every other version of the ride, it didn't stop the park from building it. But then again, they are building a Colossus clone 18 years after the original, this time with lap bars. Woo. Situated on the spot of the former Wild Mouse, the ride is loathed just as much as the others. In 2015, a teenager was hit on the head in the line when the metal stairs to climb into the train fell off. This version opened in 2013. They continue to be built around the world to this day, with new versions opening this year. Samperla did try and improve the brain bashing by modifying the front head area so your head wouldn't just bang against the pads on either side of it. It also made them feel a lot more open, and it did help. Personally, I kinda like these rides. It is mostly known as a ride which traps you in a shaking cage for two minutes and throws you around rather than flying through the air like Superman. Some people call it George Foreman Grill, the ride. I kinda enjoyed it the few times I have been on it. Yes, it is rough, but it's a really weird feeling and feels uneasy being trapped in that cage. Flying around the tight turns at what feels like high speed, it kind of is a guilty pleasure for me. You have to admire the company though for attempting to make a budget version of the flying coaster. To get a balanced response though, I thought I would post about these coasters being the best flying coaster online. The response I did get was as expected. Let's take a look at some and see what people said. Some of the comments included, I'd rather ride that roller coaster from Final Destination 3 than this. Every flying coaster that isn't manufactured by Zamperla is better. This is the definition of pain. Just posting that remark deserves an unsub. Yes, a better one is jumping off of a cliff. It is less painful than Hero in the long run. And a few of them I can't even repeat here, but there were many, many more. <laughs> Valare means to fly, and it is certain that these coasters do not make you feel that. You know something is off when people refer to the trains as prison cages. It obviously is not the best type of flying coaster. In the responses, it did show that there was another type of flying coaster that is better. In fact, you could say it is the perfect flying coaster to give that Superman feeling and to feel air flowing past your face. A ride that makes you feel like you are one of the early flying dinosaurs or even gliding through the ocean like a manta ray. Uh, okay, I've got nothing for Tatsu, but you get the idea. We have taken a look now at two different types of flying coasters, which have both received rather negative to mixed responses. Next time, it is time for a type of coaster that got it right. The B&M Flying Coaster. And we are starting with the first of them, Secret Weapon 5 Air. Thank you so much for watching this video on Expedition Theme Park. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to join the expedition, follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes, and we will see you next time.